We're now ready to move into Chapter 9 where we'll be studying the muscles and muscle tissue. In this chapter, we're going to really look on the microscopic level of what is actually interacting with each other inside of each individual muscle cell that allows the muscle to contract. We're going to focus on skeletal muscle. When you get into AMP2, that's where you really talk about the differences between skeletal muscle, cardiac, and smooth muscle. We first need to go through the four special characteristics of muscle tissue. These are four characteristics that are together unique to muscle tissue. All muscle tissue is excitable, contractible, extensible, and elastic. Excitability characteristic tells us that muscle cells have the ability to become excited and respond whenever the brain sends a stimulus to that cell. Contractibility tells us that once that muscle cell is stimulated, it can physically shorten. The physical shortening of the muscle itself is what we consider a contraction. Extensibility characteristic tells us that muscles can be stretched. This would not be a very good characteristic if muscles did not have the fourth characteristic of elasticity, meaning that once they are stretched, or contracted, they can recoil and go back to resting length so that they can be used again. One of the most important things we have to do in this chapter is go through the anatomy and truly understand how the muscle cell looks on a microscopic level. There's a lot of terminology used here, so you need to become comfortable with this first audio lecture and become comfortable with the anatomy before you really move into the physiology. This first picture shows you the organization of a skeletal muscle all the way down to the cellular level. If we look first down here in the bottom of the picture, this is one individual muscle cell. So this brings us to our first piece of terminology. A muscle cell is called a muscle fiber. Think about what a cell is, what you've learned in biology class. A cell is the simplest unit in your body. All cells have nuclei, they have organelles, they have a plasma membrane. The only reason we call this a muscle fiber instead of a muscle cell is that the cell itself is elongated. Every muscle fiber in your body is surrounded by a plasma membrane called the sarcolemma. We just give the plasma membrane a slightly different name because it has some special membrane characteristics. Around each sarcolemma or plasma membrane is a connective tissue covering made of areolar connective tissue called the endomesium. Anytime you see a word that has mesium or myo or sarco in it, you're going to know that we're referring to muscles when we're using that terminology. So each one of these individual muscle fibers in the picture has that endomesium around it. All of the muscle fibers group together to form one fascicle. Each fascicle is surrounded by a fibrous connective tissue covering known as the perimesium. We then pull back and all of these are individual fascicles. Each, as we then hook all of the fascicles together, the fascicles are going to be surrounded by an outer dense regular connective tissue covering known as the epimesium. The epimesium continues to thicken, becoming dense regular connective tissue which forms the tendon. The tendon attaches the entire muscle to a bone. It's very important that you understand the overall organization. Now what we're going to be focused on is looking at what's going on inside of this one muscle fiber. Inside of every muscle fiber, as I said, you're going to have most of the normal organelles that you do in any eukaryotic cell. But there are some things that are a little different. Inside of every muscle fiber, you have many nuclei. It's one of the few cells in the human body that, have, that are what we call multinucleate. The cells also have many more mitochondria than other cells in your body. And you just need to think about what the mitochondria is for. Remember from biology class, the mitochondria is where ATP is produced inside of your cell. So why would your muscle cells need lots of ATP? 
Obviously, you're going to use energy while you are having a muscle contraction. Two things that are unique to a muscle cell are glycosomes. This is where muscle cells store glycogen. Glycogen is the storage form of glucose. Glucose is the beginning product we use to break down from our food supply to make energy. Myoglobin, closely related to hemoglobin, is found inside of your muscle fibers to store oxygen. Again, this oxygen is stored like the glycogen as a method to produce ATP upon command. The last three things that are unique to muscle fibers are myofibrils. We'll look at those in a minute sarcoplasmic reticulum, and T-tubules. Sarcoplasmic reticulum is used to store calcium. T-tubules are also called transverse tubules, are indentions of the sarcolemma, the muscle fiber plasma membrane, that dip down into the inside of the muscle fiber. Now we're looking at a picture, a blown up image, of just one muscle fiber. So this whole thing here is one muscle cell, one muscle fiber. You can see these purple things here. Those are the nuclei inside of this one muscle fiber, and they're pushed out to the edge because the majority of the inside of every muscle fiber is composed of these long fibrous molecules known as myofibrils. Squeezed in between all the myofibrils are the multiple mitochondria as well as the glycosomes and the myoglobin, which are not shown in this picture. If you recall from learning about your tissues in Chapter 4, one way we identified skeletal muscle was that skeletal muscle was striated. The reason we were able to see those stripes was because of the way the myofibril is arranged. So now we're going to blow up just a picture of one of these myofibrils and look at some structures. So I'm going to go over everything that's written on this slide by looking at the picture. The myofibril is separated into individual functional units called sarcomeres. A sarcomere extends from one Z-disc to another. Attached to each Z-disc is what we call the thin filament. So that's shown here in blue, and here's your Z-disc. In between the thin filaments, we have these things shown in red. These are the thick filaments. The area where you have a combination of actin, thin filament, myosin, thick filament, thin, thick, thin, thick, this is the area where the muscle myofibril will appear darker. The darker area is called the A-band. So the A-band is the area where you have thin filament, and thick filament. The area where you only have actin, the thin filaments, which is here, this is the area we would call the I band. That's the light part. So if you have light, then dark, light, then dark, that's what's going to give the muscle cell striations. The area in between the thin filaments where you only have thick filaments, this is called the H zone. And the center line of the H zone is called the M line. To give you a little preview, what we're going to see as these muscle cells contract or shorten, we're going to see these two pieces of thin filament slowly begin to approach the M line. So as the muscle contracts, the H zone will disappear, and the I band is going to get smaller because as these things get closer and closer together, the area where you have only actin is going to disappear. That's why your I band disappears. You should be prepared to label an image like this on your Chapter 9 exam. Now if we look a little bit closer at what actually makes up these thick and thin filaments, we move to our next picture here. The red picture here on your left, this is what the thick filament looks like. The thick filament is composed of myosin. The myosin molecule interacts with other myosin molecules, and they kind of wrap and twist around each other. I like to think of this as looking sort of like um, a bunch of Twizzlers that are hooked together. And there's little pieces of the ends of the Twizzler sticking out called the myosin head. 
the myosin head is actually what's going to reach up and grab a hold of the thin filament whenever it's time for our muscle to contract. The myosin head is also where your ATP is going to bind. We're going to see how that works when we get further into the physiology of contraction. Even though the thin filament is itself thinner and smaller, it's actually more complex than the myosin thick filament. The thin filament has three components. The major component of the thin filament, shown here in these blue balls, this is actin. Actin is blocked by what's shown as sort of an orangish brown line, a molecule called tropomyosin. The third component, what's shown here as little yellow spots, this is troponin. In order for these two things to interact with each other, a trigger is going to come along and bind troponin, which will move the tropomyosin out of the way, allowing myosin to reach up, grab actin, and make our sarcomere actually shorten. Now if we look at the structure of the T-tubules and the sarcoplasmic reticulum that we were talking about earlier, you can see that this is inside of a muscle fiber. Again, here's all the mitochondria. Each one of these barrel-looking structures is a myofibril composed of sarcomeres. The blue, that's the sarcoplasmic reticulum. It actually wraps around each of the myofibrils. You can see it all the way throughout. This light blue area here, that represents where the actual invagination of the sarcolemma, the plasma membrane, invaginates and goes into the muscle fiber, forming the T-tubules. As we prepare to move into the physiology of muscle contraction, we're going to focus on the sliding filament model of contraction. This is on the most basic level how the muscle cell itself contracts and shortens. So if you look here, this is a relaxed skeletal muscle under the microscope, and this is showing you in comparison how the sarcomere itself looks. You have a large H zone, so you have a lighter area here, then really dark areas on the side. From here to here is the A band. The dark lines here represent your Z disc. And then the wider areas, here and here, that is your I band. That's where you have actin only. As the muscle shortens, the actin from both sides, the Z lines, Z disc, move closer and closer to each other. What ends up happening is your H zone, which was in the center, disappears, as well as your lighter areas, your I bands, also get smaller and smaller. This is just showing us that for the muscle to contract and shorten, that sarcomere is going to get thinner and thinner.